Hello, welcome to my show, Olio. My name is Susan Rushton, and before I go get started, I want, as always, to explain what Olio means. One definition is, is that it's short for olla podrida, which is Spanish for rotten bowl, which I just always get <laughs> such a kick out of. That's it's it's a Spanish Portuguese dish with essentially everything in the world in it: pork in all its iterations, bacon and pig's feet, and probably pig's ears and sausage, all all sorts of pork, chicken, chickpeas. Uh, let's see what else. Um, cabbage, carrots, beans, garlic, uh, onions, essentially everything in the world in it except <laughs> sunflower seeds and water chestnuts. That's one definition. Another definition is that oleo is what comes in between acts of a melodrama. So you might have somebody juggling, you might have somebody singing, you might have somebody doing a skit, but none of it has anything to do with anything else in the oleo, and none of it has none of the oleo has anything to do with the melodrama. So in other words, it's apples, oranges, and a monkey wrench. So welcome to my monkey wrench. <laughs> Today, my guest is a woman I um, respect highly because I respect what she does, and and that's and and I think it's a wonderful thing. This is Laura Lori Soper, of Soper, correct? Correct. And um, you are involved heavily with the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet. That is correct. What is your role there? Well, I'm on the board of directors. Um, and I'm, as the board of directors, I have a you job. You do everything. <laughs> um, I work several days a week as a receptionist, checking clients in. I train the receptionist, and I take care of both the client and the uh, volunteer database. And you do publicity. No, I do not. You do not. Okay, <laughs> but you speak for them. Well, okay. yes, I'm on Here the speakers you are. bureau. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. So the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet is located at the moment at one two nine seven two Earhart Avenue near the airport, Suite three hundred one in Auburn, behind Pacific Power and Moonraker Brewery. They have a website, auburnfoodcloset.org. They have a PO box one three two Auburn. 95604. They have a phone number 530-885-1921 and they have a, an email and all of this information is found on the website which again is auburnfoodcloset.org AIFC again AIFC at auburnfoodcloset.org So with all that inf that important information uh, past, oh, and I'll include it again. What is the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet? Well, it is a 501c3 independent company, but it's supported by uh, 17 area churches. Uh, let's see, 12 of them, I believe, are fully supporting, fully participating, meaning that they have board of, they have members on the board of directors. Of the and, Auburn Interfaith yeah. Food Closet. And okay. five of them are what we call associates, and they now, support us. Is this us. In, in Placer County or Auburn? Or um, most Auburn? of them are in Auburn, but not all. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, the Food Closet serves all of Auburn. In fact, it serves almost all of Placer County except Rockland, Roseville, and Lincoln. And that's because they have their own good food closets. All right. Okay. So if, if a person can... I have a nice house. Uh -huh. I don't live in, in Auburn. I live in the area. If I needed food, could I come get it? If you didn't live at Rockland, Roseville, or Lincoln... Okay and you are having financial difficulties, anyone can have financial difficulties, no matter how nice your house is or how much yeah, yeah. money you, okay. you might be making. Um, things come up, you run through your savings real quick. We don't ask what their income is. If somebody comes in and says they're hungry, uh, we I give need them some food. food. Make, can you help me? Yes. And your answer is always yes? As long as they live in our service area. Wow, wow. Wow, that's wonderful. Yes. Now, I, I, I've, I'm going to go off on a tangent here. I used to be on the board of the Auburn, Christmas, Auburn Area Christmas right. Basket Program. And I was, I was on the board for several years. Mm -hmm. And each year, the number of families we served 
stayed about the same. And there was always this grumbling concern. What about, what do you mean you don't, you don't ask? What do you mean? Um, what, what's to prevent people from, from abusing the system? But this, the number never increased. Mm -hmm. and, and apparently you always, apparently you, you always have food. Well, thank you. Thanks to the community of Auburn and the churches and people that support us. Yes, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, is is the is the number increasing? Is the, does the number of of the number of clients people? clients it it kind of follows along with the employment rate? Okay. The unemployment rate, I guess I should say. Right. Um, in 2011, for instance, kind of right at the height of the the recession. Mm -hmm. We were, we were serving about a thousand households a month. Okay. And now we're just under 700, an average of 700 okay. a month. All right. So it depends on what ha what's happening with the It economy. does, it All does, right. whether people are working or not working. Um, and inflation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, why are you involved with this? Well, my church. No, excuse me. Okay. How did you get involved? Okay. How did you get involved? My with? my church is, has been a supporter of the food closet since almost since its beginning. Um, it, we started in 1999, so we were the second tier that joined um, to support, and so we've always had somebody. We are fully supporting participating churches, so we've always had somebody on the board. And one of those people, when I first moved here, recruited me to work there. Um, and I started with one day a week, uh -huh. a month, and then, I went, a month. and then I went up to two days a month. And then I decided to get on the board because she was retiring. Mm -hmm. um, I think she, must, she was certainly in her 80s by that time. Mm -hmm. um, and so she thought it was time for her to retire, and she recruited me again to take mm -hmm. her place yeah. on the board. Okay. And that was in 2000, well, let's see, I started in 2004, and I think I got on the board somewhere around 2009 okay. or 10. All right. So I've been on the board for quite a long time now. Why do you say yes? Why? Yes. Ah, well, because I wanted to do some kind of volunteer work mm -hmm. um, after I retired. Uh, when I started, I wasn't fully retired, but um, I figured now, I could, I could build it up. Now you're retired, yeah. and now you're, you're fully working this is, this is This is true. <laughs> yeah. it, it, is, it is a job. Um, but our president and, and um, operations manager each put in between 60 and 80 hours a month. I don't put in anywhere wow. near that much. Wow. Okay. Um, so I lost track of what the question was. Oh, well, why are you involved? Oh, um, I wanted to do some volunteer work, and my church is involved in a number of big projects. Some things that you don't see an immediate benefit from, mm -hmm. you know, long-term mm -hmm. efforts. I wanted something that had an immediate benefit to the people in my community uh -huh. that I could see that I was doing something worthwhile. And the people who come to the food closet are really almost all very grateful. We have very little, uh, you know, very few people with a feeling of entitlement. Mm -hmm. um, and they tell us they're grateful, you know, that, that they couldn't manage without us and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Wow, wow. You see the same people? Uh, regularly? Well, that's interesting. Um, some do. Some come in fairly regularly, not necessarily every month, but fairly regularly. Mm -hmm. And they tend to be either somebody isn't working or they're just at low income jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't manage uh, right. on, okay. on uh, a low income right. job, not certainly not in Placer County no. or Auburn. Um, but approximately two thirds of all the clients that come in, come in four times a year or fewer. They're not, a, they're not abusing uh, the system. Approximately two thirds, you yeah. said? Yeah, come, come in. in four times a year or fewer. Wow, you're right. They're not abusing, they're not abusing the system. I mean, there are always a wow. few who scam us or try yeah. to scam us, but um, we do have some but procedures the food's in there. place. The food's yeah. there, and if they, if they say they want it, yes. they get it. Yeah, and we give them, um, 
enough food for three meals a day for three days for each member of the household. Hmm. And we have a special program for homeless people who may not be able to carry that much. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of homeless, okay. um, a lot of people think that we're just feeding the homeless. This is not true. The homeless consist of less than, I think it's seven or eight percent of all the people who come to us. So it's, it's not a huge number. Wow. There are 42,000 people who are food insecure in Placer County. And the definition of food insecure is what? They may not know where their next meal is coming mm -hmm. from. Okay. Well, they may not always and that's, know. And that's not a comfortable feeling. No, it's no. not. No, it's, it certainly isn't. <laughs> okay, so how often can a person come? Once every 30 days. Okay. Um, Actually, it's once every four weeks um, because okay. we have two days leeway. Because February only yeah. has 28 yeah. days, yeah. we yeah. can't set the computer for 30 days. Right. So the computer is set for 28 days, and if they come in less than that, it dings mm. and won't accept it. Okay. Um, okay. So a homeless people, if they only want to take one day of food at a time, can come in three times if they have cooking and refrigeration, four times if they don't have cooking or refrigeration. Okay. Where do you get the food? Well, we have a number of, um, well, first of all, from the churches, mm -hmm. you know, that one of the requirements of being a participating or supporting church is that they have their own they provide collection us services. either money or food or volunteers okay um and yeah so they they collect we collect um but the community itself is real Auburn is very generous the the community is extremely generous and oh let's say that again let's say that again <laughs> the, the, auburn, the community of auburn is extremely generous they they really really are I love hearing that. <laughs> I just love hearing that. And I, and I, pardon me, I want to go off on a tangent. Yeah. I've, I've talked to a friend who moved here from Roseville and then from where, where from Fairfield. Mm -hmm. And I was bragging on Auburn uh, to her uh, when we had dinner once. And, and I was, oh, and there's so many uh, uh, organizations, yeah. so many people, so many, and, and it's so, so, it's just so wonderful. But the, surely Auburn is, I said, is just basic and ordinary. There are other places like this. She said, not where I come from. Yeah, no. No, Auburn is unusually Which, well. I mean, the whole the Greater the, Auburn, Greater Auburn, yeah, is is very very generous. Auburn is very very generous. Yeah, <sighs> we have we have food drives. You know, uh, we have stuff a bus uh, a couple of times a year. We have the Auburn Walk to Stock the Food Closet uh, on Thanksgiving Day, mm -hmm. and it has grown by leaps and bounds over the last few years. I think we brought. I think. They gave us, I think it was nineteen thousand dollars last year, huh. just from donations for the walk. Huh? <laughs> we, and this walk is always on on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. And three years ago, we started um, a turkey drive at Thanksgiving, and the first year, I think maybe we got a couple of hundred turkeys. And this last and th year, that was, and you were really, we were asking, oh, how exciting! Yeah, we two hundred. Yeah. Turkeys. We were asking the public, uh -huh. um, you know, the community to bring in turkeys. Yes. Last year, which was our third year, we publicized it a little bit more. We got 700 turkeys, <gasps> wow. which was more than the number of people who came to get them. So I feel so sad. We took them I've back. Got to <laughs> oh. We took them back to the food closet oh. and we're just giving them out, you know, uh, to people who hadn't gotten one. Uh, for the rest of the month. Lori, that's fabulous. Yeah. Whoa. You should you should see the warehouse. It's, I, it's you're right. you really I should. should come take take a tour. Okay. It's very interesting. Yeah. And we welcome tours. Anybody who wants to come and take a tour, we welcome that. And if you want to take a tour of the Auburn Interfaith Food Closet, at the moment it, it is is it is out at the airport, one two nine seven two Earhart Avenue, Suite three zero one behind Pacific Power and Moonraker Brewery. 
or if you want to uh, investigate more, auburnfoodscloset.org, um, AIFC at auburnfoodscloset.org, or 530-885-1921. So, but it's, it's, the food closet isn't going to stay there. No, it's not. It's not gonna. It's not gonna move imminently um, <laughs> because we have to build a building first, okay. yeah. and it takes time to go through all the procedures and the processes. Um, we have been promised a USDA loan, but they will not give us the loan until we we have to match. Okay. basically match what they're giving us. And they won't give us the money until we have all the matching funds. Does, so right now, but yeah. But it, it's not going to disappear after two years, say. Okay. No. So you, are, you have a location. We do. We have the land. Um, we are expecting probably to move in like in the fall, sometime fall in the of fall of 2019. Yeah. Okay. And where is this location? This new location? Yes. That is <laughs> it, that that they they haven't moved to yet. It will be on Auburn Ravine Road, um, right next to the Starbucks, up by the Forest Hill Interchange. Right. Yeah. Okay. And the and the building this the spot is there. The it's spot the, is the there. Yeah. Okay. And it is paved, but yes. we'll have to take out the pavement to yeah. put everything in. Yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> so you are. How are you? Um, Here's here's a question the question you've been waiting for. Yeah. <laughs> Lori, how do you expect to gain all this money? Well, um, we've had a capital campaign, um, th a f three phases of the capital campaign. Uh, phase one went very well. We, a lot of the community donated. Um, and phase two went pretty well. We are actually at 79% of what we need. Good. So... Um, they That's they've gone good. they've gone to the businesses and asked businesses um, and we have a, we have a program called buy a brick yes if you buy a brick a four by eight brick mm -hmm. for one hundred and twenty five dollars you can have any thing etched on it that you want well I mean within mm -hmm. limits within of course reason right and within, um, yeah and. And it will be put in, and your name will be in perpetuity yeah. at the food closet. Yeah. So um, it's actually a great gift. I gave that gift to my family for Christmas, mm -hmm. and they were quite pleased Good. with it. That's <laughs> nice. That's nice. And you can buy an 8x8 eight eight brick. I think it's $230. Okay. Um, and with the 8x8, eight eight, you have room for a logo or a, mm -hmm. a picture of some kind. Oh, good. Okay. So an eight by eight brick costs how much? I think it's two hundred thirty. Two hundred and thirty dollars, mm -hmm. and a and a reg, a smaller right. uh, oblong brick right. costs one hundred twenty five. One hundred twenty five. Now the cost to us is twenty five dollars approximately. So a hundred dollars goes to the capital building fund, and, and we, people once oh, we hit, you wouldn't you wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't uh, say oh no no don't do this you, if people overpaid for the brick no. <laughs> We never turn down money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, of course, if you wanted to just give us $125, then we wouldn't have to buy a brick. But right. then you wouldn't get your name right. on, yeah. uh, on a brick. Okay. Um, so, we have sold... Well, actually, I shouldn't say because they've been having a campaign this week to go out to businesses mm -hmm. and try to sell bricks. So before that, I think we had sold 35. Mm -hmm. uh, when we get to 100, the cost of them goes down. Mm -hmm. So um, that means we'll get yeah. more. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we need about 400 bricks sold to make okay. up the money that we need. Okay. I, or I am. I, <laughs> I want you to. I want to say right here that I I will pay. Pay for a brick. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, and put your name on it. Okay, or whatever you want. Or whatever on it. I want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can do it in memoriam if you've got somebody that you want to memorialize. Um, yeah, and to to learn more about those bricks and and how to how to do that, they go on. on it's to... on the website. Okay, correct. Okay, right. Okay, so you can send a check. A um, check. to the food closet and just indicate that it's for the capital fund. Okay. Um. And if you don't really want to support that, if you prefer to support the food prog program, you can send 
a check and indicate on the line food. that you want it to go yeah. for food. Okay. And if you send a check without anything in the memo line, it will be split between the food program and the capital fund okay. until such time as we are able to get the building right. built. Um, you can attend the Music for Humanity concert at Pioneer Methodist Church this coming Sunday. This is at 3 p.m. What is the date? The 20 February 24. February 24, 2019. Okay. Right. I believe we're going to be. Um, it's it 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 may not be in time. I mean, we, this this show will probably be uh, oh, arrive after okay. that. But this is an annual event, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. It is. So if you miss 2019's right. Habitat for Humanity, Music for Humanity, then certainly They'll you, do can, it next you can do it right. next year. Right. Yes. Um, or you can make a donation at the big day of giving in May. May what? Uh, I don't second, know what it is third, this year. It's second, usually second. like between the second and the fifth, yeah. but I honestly don't know what day it is okay. this this year. So it's it's big dog. I yeah, think, big dot dog. Org probably. <laughs> so take a look at that. Yeah. Um, so I would like to know. I I want to become devil's advocate here. Sure. Um, and be a person who that says. How, why are you encouraging these people to come beg? Well, they're not begging. Okay. Um, they're suffering, basically. Uh, some of the stories that we hear are heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, anybody can have... And that was devil's advocate. I yeah. don't believe that. But <laughs> I'm sure there are some people who say, oh, no. Yeah, that, there are people who say that. Well, they should just go to work. Well, the fact of the matter is that most of them do work. Mm -hmm. um, and you saw this this intensity. Here. Right. <laughs> most of them do work. Yes. Yes. Um, the government's poverty level for a family of four is $25,750 oh. a, a year. Oh. I don't know a family. I mean, a single person can barely live on that in this area. Uh -huh. um, According I mean, and according to Feeding America, of uh, which we belong, um, it's a big association of food food closets and food banks. Seventy two percent of the clients in their network of food banks live at or below the poverty level. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people, mm -hmm. and others just have a reversal of fortune. Um, we had one lady at the food closet who. Her husband lost her job. They, they were in their 50s. They weren't quite ready to retire, uh -huh. didn't, couldn't get Social Security, and they were going through their savings yeah. at a rapid rate. Yeah. So the team leader said, you really need to just sign up and take some food, even though you don't want to. Yeah. No, and hardly anybody I don't wants take, to. I don't want oh, charity. Oh, yeah. we have people coming in who are so embarrassed. They burst into tears. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they tell us their stories. Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult for people to do that. And some of them get very, very hungry before they finally yeah. break down and do oh, it. Oh, my. Wow. Wow. Okay. And, and, you know, illness. One lady, I'll never, she hadn't been there for, I think, about 18 months, but she was still in our system. We keep people for two years. And I said, I'm so sorry you had to come back. And she told me that that they had been doing really, really well, but then her sister went to jail and they had to take on her 13-year-old niece. Uh -huh. And 13-year-olds <laughs> just cost a lot of money. <laughs> they eat a lot, they yeah. need clothes, they need school mm -hmm. supplies, and they just couldn't manage it without a little help. Wow. Wow. What do you tell these people when, when they weep to you? <laughs> We pat their hand and, and I just try to talk to them. Some people really just need to talk. Um, so I guess we serve sort of like a bartender sometimes. Sure. <laughs> they, they sit down and they just need to tell us their story. Yeah. One gentleman came in, oh, I don't know, the last time I worked there, I think it was on a Friday, and he sat down in front of me, and I had never waited on him before. Mm. First thing he said was, I beat the cancer, I'm in remission. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. 
So there was lots of applause. And yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, great. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, but, but so that's why, because beating cancer costs money. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and when people are injured or have an operation and can't go out to work, especially if they're on wage, mm -hmm. you know, if they're wage earners as opposed to salary, they're not making any money. And the vast majority of people, um, and I don't know if Washington knows this, but <laughs> the vast majority of, me? <laughs> of people live from paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And it doesn't take very much no. to to be in trouble. It mm -hmm. doesn't take very long to right. be in to be in financial trouble and start having trouble. One man sat in front of me and started to cry. He'd lost his job and he said, I've never not been able to take care of my family before. He was embarrassed and sad and just devastated. Yeah. And the, the, the message we get from some corners is that these people are lazy. They're not. Not all of them. I'm, I'm sure some, <laughs> some of, them, of are, them are, but most of them do work or have somebody in the family who works. Yeah, and it's it, this isn't a, a where they, they they don't want to be in this situation. No, they, they surely much don't. prefer yeah. not to have to find themselves yep. needing to come to the. Well, and you and you get elderly budget. people on on social security who, honestly are bringing in eight or nine hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. and because they worked at low-income jobs mm -hmm. all their lives they mm -hmm. haven't got enough to live on when yeah. they get to Social Security and they manage like if it's a couple that might amount to sixteen hundred a month they mm -hmm. manage they just manage and then their family comes you know yeah. son loses their job comes to live with them that's more than they can handle right. yeah. so there are all kinds um, of reasons yeah. that people so come in. So if somebody wants, somebody seeing this is hungry, mm -hmm. they can come and fill out some forms? Yep. Okay. And, if, and when I say come, they come to 12972 Your yep. Heart Avenue, Suite 301. Yep. And there's no judgment. It's, it's certainly, from what I, I, no, no judgment. No. Um, and you can call them. 8530-885-1921 or email if you if you still have questions, <laughs> if, right? If you still have questions, AIFC at AuburnFoodCloset.org. And you can email you can if you want to donate funds or ask more questions or volunteer. Yes, and the volunteer application is also on the website. Okay. So, and the website is at auburnfoodcloset.org. This has been a fascinating conversation. I learned a heck of a lot, and, <laughs> and, and I don't often get chills sitting in this seat. This is wonderful. Well, thank you very much. I, I, I'm just tickled to hear this about Auburn. Hon honestly, I'm always thrilled to be able to talk about the food closet. That's great. <laughs> Lori Soper of the Auburn Internet Interfaith Food Closet, mm -hmm. thank you very much for joining You're me. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you for asking me. You're welcome, and thank you for watching.